Welcome to this video on side chain compression. Now, side chain compression is a much used and loved technique that involves taking a sound source, like a kick drum track, for example, and using that signal as a trigger for activating a plugin. So, in other words, we're using a primary source to lower the volume of a secondary source. And we do that by applying a plugin which is called a compressor. Now, this process is often referred to as ducking. In this video, we're going to take a look at some side chaining basics, and we'll also cover a few use cases for side chain compression. We're also going to take a quick look at basic compression techniques, and I'll give you an overview of some really important parameters that allow us to control a compressor. Now, I can almost sum side chain compression up in two words, daft and punk. Daft Punk use sidechain compression in so many of their tracks, and I guess if you know them, you'll instantly recognize that instinctive push-pull, almost throbbing type of sound. A lot of French house artists masterminded the fine art of sidechain compression and almost instantly made it as French as champagne or a baguette. One of the most common uses for sidechaining is using the kick drum as a source and having the kick trigger other parts of a track, like bass or synths. It's a really awesome technique for having the kick push towards the middle of a mix while the compressor is pulling everything else out whilst that kick is activated or playing. It's a really musical effect and it's easily achieved by applying a compressor over the tracks that we want to bring down. Then you turn on the side chain button or function inside the compressor and then you create a send on your source track. In this case, that's the kick drum track. Take a listen to this example without compression. Okay, now let's have a listen to it with the side chain on. So hear how the kick is now more prominent in the mix. And the result is for everything to be gently pulled and pushed. So in this case, side chaining or side chain compression is adding to the mix by allowing one of the most important parts of the mix to push through whilst adding a musical production quality to the track. Another very basic example is a voiceover for radio or for TV. And there's almost always really annoying music in the background of an advertisement or a radio show. And rather than paying some person to sit there and drop the fader and move it back up again, you can simply apply side chain compression. So the voiceover triggers the compressor, which is over the top of the music. So that will drop the volume of the music so the voiceover can be heard. So that's kind of why the process is often referred to as ducking. So basically, the music's been ducked so it doesn't get smashed in the head by the voiceover. Side chain compression can be really musical or quite strategic and save us some editing time and of course money. Another use for side chain compression is to duck an effect like a delay. Now a delay is basically repeating the lead vocals over and over and having that previous line repeating can get in the road of what the vocalist is actually saying. And it won't be as easy to hear what the singer is saying if that delay is just blurring over the top of it. So we can introduce a side chain compression setup so the lead vocal is triggering the compressor, which in turn is lowering the volume of that delay. So it's not as prominent when the lead vocalist is singing. This is really useful because when we get it right, it saves us going in and having to turn the delay down and up or even automating it. It all creates a whole lot of space for the most important thing in the track, which is the lead vocal. My point here is that side chain compression is not just for instruments. It can also be used to impact things like long reverbs or delays or large affected sounds. And it's used quite a lot in darker techno tracks. And it helps to create more room in a track which is already quite full with atmospheric sounds and instruments. Side chaining has managed to outlive more than just one style of music, and it's become an important technique in a number of different genres, and also a really important mix tool. Other than the source, the most important part of side chain compression is the actual compressor itself. Let's take a look at a compressor so we've got a better understanding of what is actually happening when it's used over a track. 
They used to be and still are quite expensive pieces of outboard equipment. But in the age of the door, you've got a number of different types of compressors right here at your very fingertips. And they've all got different ways of operating. Many have different colors or saturation. So many legendary compressors have their own unique sound. But in general, I guess they all perform a very basic operation. They reduce the difference between the loudest part of a recording and then the softest. So bringing everything just much closer together, meaning that we can really push that compressed track a little louder or move it up in the mix. So it's about controlling the dynamics of a track. Now there's a few important things that you need to understand about how to control a compressor. And this is relevant to sidechain compression. First of all, there's many plugin presets that can help give you pointers on what settings to use. So make sure you spend some time applying different engineers settings while you're learning. Compressors can also appear in different places indoors. For example, in Cubase, there are standalone compressor plugins and there are also compressors here in the channel strip. And they can also be sidechained. Let's take a look at some of the important compressor parameters. Firstly, the threshold. Now the threshold is basically our control level. Anything louder than the threshold setting will immediately be compressed. So to put it simply, the volume will be dropped. So the threshold amount defines at which level on the track the compressor will be activated. And you need to find the right threshold setting before the compressor will even kick in. So start with the loudest part of your track. The ratio is basically how much that signal or volume will be dropped or attenuated at the point where your track hits your threshold level. The higher the ratio, the more your track will be attenuated when your track hits the level set in the threshold. A lower setting is more natural, and a higher setting will result in a more noticeable sound. Even a pumping sound. Now, this can be a really good thing when it comes to side chain compression, and the best way to figure out the right sound is to use your ears. The attack will control when the compressor will start to react once your track has hit your threshold. So, it's basically how fast the compressor kicks in. Drums have a really fast and sharp transient, meaning they basically get loud really quickly. So, you need a faster attack time. Unless you're mixing heavy music, then vocals probably won't get as loud quickly as, say, drums. So you can drop the attack time back a little bit to avoid unwanted artifacts or noise. Softer instruments, such as, say, a keyboard pad, wouldn't need the attack to be too fast, if it even needed compression in the first place. The whole parameter affects the amount of time the compressor will work after the signal exceeds the threshold. So this is a really important parameter when it comes to ducking. The release is the point where the signal returns to normal after the sound drops below the threshold. A lot of compressors these days have an auto release option, and it's best if you're just starting out to use this. They're generally really reliable and quite effective, and they're a decent function to use if you're side chaining. The makeup parameter relates to how much the overall volume has been raised. So, if we drop 3 dB every time the compressor kicks in, we can raise the volume so the track becomes louder. In other words, we're making the soft part of the track louder and the loudest parts of the track softer. Raising the makeup means the compressor will add volume back in to the track. You can quickly bypass or turn off the compressor plugin to check how it sounded before and how it sounds with the compressor on. Now, that's a very basic and quick rundown of how a compressor works. And when it comes to side chaining, it's really important to find the right settings. In the case of vocals, you know, we're relying on the compressor's settings to activate and control the actual compressor itself. The biggest difference with side chain compression is that the source, in this case, the kick is triggering the compressor. Let's quickly do a recap of how side chaining works. A compressor is added to the track that you want to duck or affect. You set up a send from the source track, so like a kick drum. Turn the send on and check the level. Now go to the compressor on the track you want to affect and turn on side chaining. It's a matter of fine tuning the parameters so that the compressor is creating the right effect on the track. 
Thanks for taking the time to stop by and checking out this video on sidechain compression basics. If you're using sidechain compression, then please leave a comment below and let us know how you're using it. Tell us what compressors you're using and what kind of music you're actually making. Please like the video if you've learned something and as always, subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for plenty more videos just like this. I'm gonna catch you there.